Hello, students of science. Let's talk about the digestive system. What's the goal and what adaptations do we have? So your digest digestive system. No guts, no glory. So this is your body. Now it's made up of lots and lots and lots of tiny pieces, but only a few types of those pieces there. You're like Legos there. You know, Legos, there's lots and lots and lots of pieces, but there's not that many different kinds of pieces. There's only a few different ones. Your body needs to make stuff like this, brain, kidney, lungs, heart, liver, and straight up energy. It needs to make those structures, but it has to use these starting materials. All these delicious, delicious, inedible pieces of plastic starting materials. So, how do you get from these starting materials to actually build all those organs? How do you get from that to that? Well, to go from all this stuff here is your digestive system's job. It's the one that's going to take all these pieces here. It's going to take them apart. It's going to break them down. And so you're going to get those loose Legos, which you can use to assemble anything. And, of course, the energy that you're going to use to assemble those things. Now the body can build whatever it needs. You've taken these things and broken them down into their individual pieces so you can reassemble them into whatever you need. That's your digestive system. The digestive system converts food into small molecules that the cells of the body can use for energy and building materials. Here we can see parts of your digestive system. Just a little bit after the stomach, we have the liver, small intestine, pancreas, and gallbladder right there. And you can see they're secreting these chemicals that are breaking down the food as it goes through there into those individual pieces which your body can reassemble into whatever it needs. That's the point of the digestive system. So we've got a couple different kinds of forms of digestion. First one is called intracellular. This is a really simple one. Essentially, each cell does its own digestion. This is the make-it-yourself. And a perfect example of this are the ocean sponges. And they're not actually plants, they're actually alive, they're actually animals. And they are pumping in food and then sort of uh, pumping it through there as they're filtering out everything that's in there. But what makes it different is that every single cell is responsible for its own digestion. It has to make it itself. We, on the other hand, we don't have that. We have extracellular digestion. An extracellular digestion means that the food is broken down outside of cells and then it's transported in. Like, you know, let's use an example of a cow. It takes the food, it breaks it down in its digestive tract, and then once it's broken down, then it's just distributed throughout the body. Everything is sort of pre-digested for all of your cells, so your cells don't actually have to do any work. They're pretty much fed. So extracellular digestion, there's a couple different ways we can do this. The first one is called the gastrovascular cavity. This means that there is a single opening for both food and waste. Yep, that's, that's, that means what you think it is. Perfect example of this is the sea anemone. They have one hole, food comes in, it's broken down, digested, absorbed into the body, and then out the exact same hole. Yep, that's right. They ate and poo through the same hole. We, thankfully, don't have that. We have a digestive tract. This is where we have two openings, an entrance and an exit. It's a one-way passage. And food is broken down kind of in an assembly line. Like when you take food in your mouth, your mouth and your saliva are going to break down the sugars. Your stomach is going to break down the proteins. Your intestines are going to break down the fat. Each one of those is broken down separate from all of the rest. So, gastrovascular cavity, one way in, one way out. Digestive tract, separate entrance and exit. So this is you, kind of simplified there. You got a mouth, it, you have mechanical digestion where stuff is physically broken up, you store it for a little bit, you absorb it, and then anything left over, out the anus. Here's your digestive tract, a little more uh, accurate. Here's your esophagus, your stomach, leads to your very, very large small intestine where food is absorbed, then to your large intestine, through your rectum, and out the anus. By the way, that's your appendage there. Now, what I want you guys to do for the remainder of uh, your notes, I want you to make three columns because we're going to talk about how we have different diets requiring different body plans. And those three different diets we're going to focus on are carnivores, herbivores, and omnivores. Carnivores, of course, eat meat. So they're going to have very sharp mouth parts or structures, things that are going to be good for capturing the food, holding the food, and slicing and dicing the food. And their jaws have, a, have an up and down movement. So this is kind of acts a lot like scissors as it slices and dices the meat. Here you can kind of see an example of, a, you know, getting nice and close into a carnivore's mouth. There's those very long claws, not for lettuce, for holding and capturing prey. Now we can get a nice view inside the bear. It's a little disgusting, but you can see those sharp pointy teeth and 
and we got some of those sharp teeth at the back there as well on either side and yep you're being licked by a bear I want to wash off your screen after this herbivores on the other hand those are the ones that have mouth parts for rasping grinding pulverizing you know very very different adaptations for an herbivore as opposed to a carnivore their front teeth and lips have evolved for grabbing and pulling food. If you've ever tried to feed a horse, you know that the lips are going to get you before the teeth will. Very muscular lips. And they have a side-to-side -side movement of their jaws. This helps them grind and break down all those different plants that they're putting in there. That's what those molars at back are really good for. And then there's omnivores, which of course is us. And they kind of have parts of both. You know, we are good at both eating meat and plants, but we're not excellent at either one. We're not as good at eating meat as carnivores are. We're not as good at eating plants as herbivores are. There's an old phrase for this, jack of all trades, master of none. We're good at everything, but we're great at nothing. But this does give us more flexibility on what we eat. This is you in an industrialized setting. This is kind of your digestive tract start to finish. Well, at the start, you got your mouth and your teeth where you physically break apart the food. Next up, saliva goes in there. Once the food's been broken up, saliva is going to go in and start chemically digesting the food. Your stomach acid and bile and pancreatic juices, those are going to chemically break down the food as you get further down in there. Small intestine is where you're going to be absorbing those nutrients into the blood. So this tank you see right here is your blood. All of those nutrients, all the good stuff is pulled out of the food and what you've been drinking put into the blood where it can be used and transported. Then you get to the large intestine where you're going to kind of concentrate stuff. Water is being pulled out and absorbed and then of course being concentrated so that the, you know, the leftovers, the waste, they can go out the rectum, the poop chute. Now over here, this bit thing right here is the liver. The blood is going to go in here and it's going to clean the blood and detoxify it. Take out any of the, or sorry, break down the bad stuff. Then you go to the kidneys where they take out the bad stuff and put it in your urine so you pee it out. That's you, now in cartoon form. 